Right now, the gardens are going nuts because we've had a lot of rain and we've had a lot of sunshine mixed in. So everything is just really shooting up, including the weeds. So there's some pretty weedy spots in here. We're gonna show you anyways. We wanna go through a full summer garden tour and show you everything that we're growing. What you got, Tirza? Tomatoes. Oh, those are pretty. First thing right on the edge here is marigolds, mostly just for pretty. They're also supposed to help with pest control and something for the pollinators. And next to it, we've got our onions. Onions are growing really nice. You can see down here how big they're already getting. It is something that we store for the winter. We actually just brought some onions up from our root cellar. We're in July now. Brought them up from our root cellar from last year and they were still just like they were picked yesterday. So I'll take you in farther here and show you some of the other stuff we've got. You can see here we mulch these onions with leaves and it is working out really, really well. If you look down under the leaves here, we just got a ton of rain. The soil is not too wet. A few weeks ago, we had a real lack of rain going on and Shelly came out here and looked under these leaves and it was still damp under there. Come on in a little farther and right here we've got a bed of carrots. They are looking really nice too. Growing nice and big and bushy. You can tell that there's some nice big carrots down there. I said this in another video that we just did that you really want to do when you're wanting to store vegetables like onions and carrots is plant them far enough apart so that they can grow plenty big. The bigger they are, the better they'll store for the winter. On down here a little farther is our garlic. This is spring garlic that we planted. We usually basically just forget to plant fall garlic and we do it in the spring, but it works out really well and it still stores really well. So right here, we've got some patty pan squash and summer cooked neck squash. Those are basically for fresh using. Shelly will make relish with it to use on hamburgers and hot dogs. And she makes some really, really good brownies with that patty pan squash. This is lemon balm right here. That is amazing in tea. Like if you do mint tea or something, add some lemon balm to it. It's really, really good. Here's our rhubarb patch. I think we're gonna end up pulling some of this out. We do sell some of this at a store where we sell our eggs and asparagus. It is pretty good money for what it is, but it's just barely worth having a patch set apart for it but i really like strawberry rhubarb jam rhubarb muffins and rhubarb pie so i don't want to get rid of all of it what we got left in our front garden here is our raspberry patch this is honestly probably one of my favorite parts in our garden just because these raspberries are so prolific they're just starting to come in now the children are starting to pick them here and there and then all of a sudden they're going to hit and we'll start picking literally like a gallon a day perennial fruit in your garden as much as possible is the way to go it's so much less work not planting every year tasty. So that's it for this front garden here. Let's move on down to the garden out closer to the road. What you got on, buddy? Where's the hat? Let me see it up close. Hold still. Pretty sweet. First thing down here in this garden is the broccoli and cabbage. Do a lot of broccoli. That's something that Shelly really likes to do for the winter. She cuts it up and puts it in bags to freeze for the winter. We don't do much cabbage because I don't really like it, but she does a little bit and we eat that fresh. Sometimes she makes coleslaw or something like that. And it's okay, just not my favorite thing. Right next to this is our asparagus patch. We do a lot of asparagus. I think there's what, like a hundred plants. We do a lot of asparagus because we sell that. That sells really well in the spring and it's a pretty easy thing to grow. It's another perennial thing. You can see these tops have grown up and we only pick for about a month or so and then we let it go. We let the tops grow up. What that's doing is getting energy from the sun and it's really strengthening the roots in the ground. And then late fall, we'll cut the tops off and burn them. And you wanna burn them for sure because they have bugs in the tops and you don't want those to keep coming back every year. Let's move on farther here. Right here was a few cabbage plants that we had. And yes, it does look very weedy. Shelly didn't really want me to show this to you, but it's just part of life. This is the way it is. And like I said, we've had a lot of rain and sun mixed in. So everything is just really going up. Everything except the cucumbers that is. And this is our few little cucumber plants here. We keep trying these every year because Shelly really loves them. It's something that we just can't grow very well. I don't know why. We have to keep trying to figure that out. Seems like everything else we can do pretty good at, but the cucumbers has always been a real struggle for us. But Shelly loves them so much that we keep trying and I'll keep trying for her. Next up, we have our strawberries we have a pretty decent sized patch here we pick a ton of strawberries in the spring these are done now after we've done picking them we mow them down and then right now they're growing up in weeds but we need to take those weeds out we'll till between the rows and then once winter comes we'll cover those with straw but we really love to have strawberries to put in the freezer to have for smoothies and stuff next up right here we've got our green beans we don't have a really big green bean patch when we were doing market garden, we did a ton of green beans. We did succession planting to keep them going because they sold pretty well. We don't do a lot of them now. Shelly doesn't think it's really worth it to do a lot because they are a lot of work to do picking. I don't like picking them. And then the canning and stuff like that. But I really like canned green beans. She said that if we got a pressure canner and we did green beans, I was gonna have to do the canning. And you're gonna can. Mm-hmm. 
That's what she tells me. So I guess I'm gonna have to give that a try. Maybe I'm looking forward to canning them. I don't know. I'm looking forward to eating them. We've got sweet potatoes in a few different spots. We've got some in a raised bed over there that we're trying out this year and some on the other side of these tomatoes here. Sweet potatoes is one of our main staples for our homestead garden. They store really well and they're just delicious in a lot of different ways. Sweet potato fries, baked sweet potatoes. They go into a lot of different dishes. We really focus on doing things like that in our homestead garden. Right next to that is our tomatoes and kudos to Shelly because she is doing an amazing job with these tomatoes this year. If you remember one of the videos we did earlier, we showed how we got some overspray from the neighboring field over there. Some Roundup hit these things and was curling the leaves, but Shelly was very diligent in putting some fish fertilizer and seaweed on them and really taking care of them, pruning them, and they are looking really, really good. A lot of people planting tomatoes, they plant like tons of plants, 30 or 50 or 70 tomato plants. You really don't need that many. Plant them far enough apart, take good care of them so they do really well. We only have 15 tomato plants right here and this will be enough to make all of our sauces, barbecue sauce, ketchup, salsa, tomato juice. And it's enough for our family of six for a whole year. All right, let's go to the other side of the tomatoes here. And here's more of our sweet potatoes. Lots and lots of sweet potatoes in this row here. And next to that is our white potatoes. Kind of the same idea as the sweet potatoes. They work in tons of different dishes. You can use them a ton of different ways and they store really, really well. So don't hill our potatoes with dirt anymore. We used to do that and it's just a ton of work. Now we hill them with leaves and it works so much better. Let's go over to the raised beds right here next to these. Here's our raised bed with sweet potatoes in it. It is looking really gorgeous. I have no idea how they're gonna turn out. I really feel pretty good about it though because this soil is really nice. It is topsoil and then with a lot of compost mix mixed in. For growing potatoes and sweet potatoes, things that grow into the ground like that, the best thing you can do for them is give them nice loose soil. Next to that, we've got our pepper plants, orange blaze and California wonder peppers in here. And we use those in salsa. Shelly freezes those to be able to use and stuff throughout the winter. On down here, we have some ground cherries that Izzy planted. Those are just something that we decided to try for fun. Might try to make a pie with them or something like that. You'll see most of the stuff we grow in our garden is very purposeful. With a homestead garden, we need to be really strategic about what we grow, so we're growing the things that we really eat. We try to throw a couple fun things in there, like the ground cherries, and these currants right over here. We've got three currant bushes. We got like one picking of those this year, and Shelly made some jam with it, and it was really good. So I'm really hoping these get bigger by next year, and we'll be able to do even more of that, because I really like that. Let's move on. There's just a couple more things in this garden here. We've got some more carrots here. This is just like a late planting of carrots that should store better for the winter, possibly even get hit by a frost or something. And when they get hit by a frost, they are a lot sweeter. Right next to our garden here is Izzy's chickens. This is a chicken pen I built for him and his chickens are doing great. He's got Easter eggers in here that lay green and blue eggs. And he sells those to me so that I can sell them at the store along with our other eggs. And so he's making a good chunk of money. This is our butternut squash. And that's another one of those staple things along with like sweet potatoes, white potatoes. This is something that can be used so many different ways for food for the winter. They store really, really well. It's hard for us to grow here. Here in Ohio, we get a lot of humidity, a lot of moisture and that's just bad for vining plants like this. They get powdery mildew and stuff. And these often die faster than we would like them to, but usually we can keep them alive long enough to get a pretty good harvest and we call that a win. Shelly does grow a couple other herbs. Some years she grows sage, she grows basil, she dries those and she likes those. And also we've got tea here. We've got chocolate peppermint and apple mint. Those make really great iced teas. We also dry some and use that for hot tea in the winter. And they both pair really good with that lemon balm that I was talking about. And these are planted in big containers that are set into the ground so that they don't spread. If they're in a garden or something like that, they just really spread. So I sunk a couple of containers in the ground and planted them in those. That's everything we grow in our gardens. And if you wanna know which varieties we grow, go watch this video next and we'll tell you which ones we grow and why we grow them. Oh, me and those are so bad. You have them on your neck. Should we just 